WonderCon. So excited with the girls. Sarah and Jamie. Ooh, look at that booty. Sissy that walk, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> WonderCon, what time is it? It is almost 9 a.m. Almost we're, 9 a.m. Extremely too early. But Super early. Talk about it. <laughs> Easter <laughs> Sunday. So. Also my birthday. Yay. 23. Nobody wants you when you're 23. Yeah. Likes you. Get it together. <laughs> Likes or once. More updates later. <laughs> yeah, Marky. Hey, everybody. I'm Mark from Warner Brothers, and welcome to the panel for the hundred. We're excited to have you. So we're going to be kicking things off today with a. WonderCon exclusive. We're going to be showing you what's essentially the first 13 minutes of footage from our next all new episode, <laughs> which aired this Thursday at 9 8 Central on the CW. And then after our screening, IGN, IGN's Eric Goldman will be coming out to introduce our panel and begin the QA. So thank you so much for coming. We're excited to be here. And let's start the screen. Jason Rothenberg. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, Bob! Oh my god, look at Oh my god. Oh my god, Lindsay. Fuck Jasper. Ooh, Lindsay's top, yes, girl. Oh. Oh my god, I'm not. So, lots of talk about the glasses. A lot of cast members here, lots of different storylines, uh, but. Obviously, a lot's been going on with the show. Uh, anything I say would be sort of uh, interesting and underselling, you know, the reaction to recent storylines. So, Jason, I do want to sort of kick it off with you. Uh, Lex's death, huge reaction to say Ooh. the least. What has been your reaction to the reaction? Well, I mean, first off, thank you for having us back at WonderCon. It's an honor to be able to talk about the show. Um, you know, the reaction has obviously been surprising to us, to me in particular. I didn't ever imagine that it would be so intense. You know, we designed it to be a ride. We designed it to be emotional. Of course, the show's a tragedy. Horrible things happen in every episode. True. Um, but this landed in a different way uh, um, um, for our audience, especially LGBTQ fans of the show. And, you know, one of the things that just sort of began to drive it home for me was I watch fan reaction videos sort of religiously on Friday mornings and on this particular Friday I couldn't watch them. They were too intense. The audience, I mean, uh, the one after the next, they were devastated by what they saw. And, you know, we as artists and writers and actors, you know, we don't want to hurt people. And I feel like this touched something real. It touched a nerve. It, it activated something in people who you know, their whole lives have had to deal with with things that me as a straight white guy, you know, obviously couldn't relate to. So I was very surprised um, by it. And I've apologized for that. We never really, um, I think, understood the power of that relationship and that character. Um, and so knowing what I know now, I would have done some things differently. That's an acknowledgement that I need to make. And really, the only promise explicitly that I've ever made about the show, and guys, I apologize for saying this, but nobody is safe. You know, that's the kind of show it is, and so I do think that, you know, I regret the way that I talked about the show on social because obviously I'm excited, I get excited about the show, I love the fact that we have a bisexual lead, I love the fact that, you know, a new audience came to the show um, because of this relationship, but I was excited and I was sharing my excitement and that was misinterpreted to mean that I was promising that I have um, oh God, Dad! Yeah, oh, I got this. The commander could be heading straight for my people, and now the worst possible person is in that role. So, you know, can you talk about uh, going forward? You know, how much is the loss of Lexa weighing on her while she has to deal with so much else? Um, well, I think first, like Clark is, you know, has always been very good at compartmentalizing. She's always been very good at pushing forward in even the worst situations. But this one's different. I mean, you know, this is her love, and oh. um, it's it's going to be really, really tricky for her. Um, 
and uh, I, I think it changes her. It really changes her for good. Um, but in true Clark fashion, she will somehow <laughs> get through it. Um, but it, it really is it's such a hard situation for her. Bellamy has gone to some very hard places. Yes. Yes. You're, you're reaching there. Right? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, she, she did that for kindness. Uh, you know, can he earn back that trust with the people that you know, he worked so closely with in the past? Um, you know, I think he's going to have to prove himself and uh, he's going to have to learn some pretty tough lessons. 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 Yeah, lessons, whatever. Lessons of that. I'm sorry, this lady is something she's doing great things. Lessons is an award. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's going to sign that. Um, I think it's going to take some time to uh, you know, uh, prove his worth to them. Um, I, you know, I don't think that he's, uh, he can't be redeemed and I, I, he still has a lot of qualities that are an asset to this guy through and, you know, hopefully him changing his mind can make him see that. Oh. Lindsay, you know, Raven... <laughs> She is now sort of rejecting that, but but will it be that easy? She did take the chip, uh, and we see that Jaha has some other sort of plan brewing. So can she so easily say, uh, "I'm out on this deal"? You know, I Damn. that answer is definitely coming up as far as uh, in, in the next episodes that follow. But um, I think you really get to see the hold the chip can put on people and what it can do to one's mind and just kind of like how scary that is and um, how one can utterly lose a loss of control. But I think you, you see Raven really put her mentality to the test um, and also her her friends <laughs> come to her rescue maybe. So, yes. It's good. Keep, uh, keep watching the next episodes. You'll get all your answers. <laughs> Yeah, she's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about uh, what does he do? Well, now that his loyalty is going to be very tested, he's clearly trying to help save the lives of these people, but his mom is diehard Team Pike. Hey, uh, quick show of hands. Who hates my mom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, to, to everyone who just raised their hand, um, don't forget that, um, you know, before he came to the ground, he spent four or five months with these five people. Before that, I think he had a pretty loving relationship with his parents on the Ark. And so, his mom is alone on the ground, she's lost her husband, and if Monty turns his back on her, then she has nobody. So I think it, the issue isn't as black and white as, as that may initially seem. So, uh, okay, he's very conflicted, but I think he's always trying to do the right thing. So we'll see which direction he goes. Okay, Christopher. Uh, so Richard, yeah. uh, with, with eight... Okay! Okay, Richard! <laughs> I'm glad I got a couple cheers now. Hello, you. <laughs> There's eight episodes left this season. How many more times will Murphy get beat up? <laughs> eight. <laughs> I gotta ask my question too. <laughs> I'll let you think on that. That's, uh, well, I mean, I can't spoil anything, but I think, uh, you know, consistency is the key. <laughs> On a more serious note, uh, Murphy, you know, he was taken to pull this, uh, he really was thrown into this situation. How is he reacting to everything happening around him? Because he was really thrown thrown in there and there's so much, so much you think that's happening. I mean, for Murphy being thrown into the fire, that's not, uh, that's not anything new to him. I mean, that's, that's kind of been his, his MO since being on the ground. He's gone from one bad situation to another. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think he's, he's, he's taking it the, the same way he takes Saul situations for him, which is just what uh, he, he analyzes the situation, sees what he can do to survive, and he makes sure that he does. And so far, he's got a pretty good record of that. The huge sort of revelation about all these things that are happening to people she cares about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, my mind was blown even just like when I kind of read properly what was going on in like in Arcadia and with Jaha and everything. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, she's definitely going to learn more, I'm sure you can all gather that, but, um, but, it, it, yeah, her mind will be, like, 
Uh, Murphy downloaded Clark on everything in between episode 7 and episode 9. So she yeah. knows everything uh, as of what you guys just saw. Right. Uh, outside of the Arcadia, she did not Outside of whatever Murphy knows. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to see those scenes. Uh, you know, Bob, let me go back to, you know, uh, Bellamy signing with Pike in the first place. You know, he went through, he did some pretty, very dark actions. What do you think it was that sort of made him decide to, to sign with him and to go along with that initially? Uh, initially, I, I, you know, I, I kind of call that, but, uh, look, I, I think that Bellamy, with his experience with the Grounders, has never been really positive. Um, you know, there was, a, there was like a hundred kids and they were trying to survive and then an army started, we tried to retreat and they killed us and fenced us in and we had to fight our way out. For Bellamy, he went into Mount Weather and released hundreds of Grounders that were supposed to help in the fight and they just abandoned them and left the Sky Crew there. So I think once Mount Wonder went down, I think he'd had enough. It was the straw that broke the camel's back, and he decided that he was going to take, you know, an, um, action with Pike. Even though Pike's was very drastic, and, and I mean, you hear that Bellamy tried to stop the man on the battlefield, but still failed to do that. Um, I think that Bellamy was tired of living under the law of the grounders that haven't necessarily treated them, the Sky Crew, the way that you know he thought they would. And people have to keep in mind that Bellamy wasn't privy to any conversations that Clark and Lexa were having. So what the audience knew is something that Bellamy did not know. Um, so he went, went forward with Pike. Um, and you know, I think it's pretty true to the way that Bellamy was in first season. He kind of acts first and then asks questions later. Um, and now a lot of questions are being asked. So yeah, in terms of that, I understand why he decided with Pike, um, even though it was quite impressive. You know, as she might be turning her back on the city of light or not. You know, do you think she can reconcile this situation? Did it really seem like she just it was something she was not able to move back past, and that's why she took the ship in the first place? Reconcile as far as it's just started living with it, living with it, you living know, with and it? Being, being okay with it in some way. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the most interesting things about this storyline, especially with Raven, because she always was such a physically and mentally strong character. Um, dis the disability has, you know, it threw on her ass. It threw on her ass in so many more ways than just that, oh, you know, I can, my body can no longer move the way I want it to. It, it, it created such a chronic depression inside of her, and I kind of feel like most of Raven's obstacles and, and monsters this season are inside of her that, uh, that people can't see. And she's the only person that can get herself outside that hole. So it's really interesting to me how the City of Light had became a, a desperate beacon of uh, salvation, and then she's finding it to be an abysmal <coughs> hell that she has to once again get herself out of. So um, it's tested her in so many ways. So I think she's, uh, you know, and she's building herself to be that much stronger. Jason, with these chips, are they like flavored? <laughs> Mine is barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a salt and vinegar guy. They're like listen to the same. Uh, I always wanted to know what happens if you take two chips. <laughs> Shut up, Doug. Second city of light. Just kidding. OD on chips is my name. I'm just like in chip face. Yeah. <laughs> so, start with different flavors of the chip. Ranch. Um, you got a great little uh, Bonnie and Clyde thing going there. Yeah, you really, did. Uh, you know, uh, Mike, Mike, Amari's kind of, she's kind of a, a wild card in all this, I feel like. Oh, wait, this is that character. She, when she pops in, might we see her again soon? Might she be able to help in some way with the current situation? Jason? <laughs> <laughs> what do I say to that? I would say, <laughs> I would say Murphy is in love. And I guess Jason. Yeah, I guess he can take his turn to talk. In a way that he's surprised by, I think. He's, only, he's always only taking care of Murphy, you know? And for the first time in his life, there's somebody that he cares about outside of himself. Um, and I think it'll change him. Richard, you agree? I fully agree. I think, uh, I mean, I think uh, speaking as Murphy, I think he'd obviously love to see the more again. And, uh, Obviously, me as Rich, I love Louise, and I love what she brings to that role, and I think we have great chemistry on screen. Uh, don't be jealous, Bob. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love you, man. Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm jealous of everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, 
without, without giving away too much, I think uh, where we left that story with, with me and her, and definitely there's a little bit more to, to go. I think it's not it's not uh, quite wrapped up there yet. So I, I hope to see her. Uh, was it very strange for you guys on the hundred to be a scene where you're driving in a car singing along to the violin? Band? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't sing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you chose not to. Well, actually, I think it was scripted that Bellamy yeah. doesn't. Sing. I, I read the script. And I, I read the script and I followed it. <laughs> did you think those were? Did you think that was like a fake page when you got it? Just because it just never seemed like something that happened on this show. Yeah. I was excited about the car. We had a car. That was cool. No more walking. No more walking. To answer your question, Eric, I was just happy to sing. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to sing more. We'll wash your tongue next time. Uh, hey, Chris, you were there. Do you have an answer? Mm hmm? <laughs> I think Bob wasn't singing because he never learned the words. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was good. I remember Deb and I spent quite a few hours together. We lived together last season, so we spent quite a few hours learning the songs. I don't know if either of us have ever heard it before. Yeah, we start oh, <laughs> Speak for yourself, Chris. <laughs> Throw you under the bus on that one. <laughs> Um, before I go to audience questions, I, I just wanted to ask sort of a, a, a broad question about uh, the Alley storyline and the fact that, you know, this has always been a science fiction show, but that this storyline is kind of going into a very sort of specific sci-fi way that there's, some of you have to act in scenes and act like you don't see Erica. Uh, was that interesting for you to kind of have yeah. this very different element come in this year? Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. You, you want to look at it. Yeah, you do. It's <laughs> pretty. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting how each director shoots yeah. Ali as well, yeah. because there's many different ways of doing it, whether you go all the way through with her in it or stop and start. Pause? Yeah, pause. All right. Erica, step out. Yeah. <laughs> he resumed. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it, it makes the, uh, I don't know. What is the flow? But it's, it's, uh, it's a fun dynamic to have, yeah. where you really just, kind of block out this hologram that doesn't exist. Yeah. Sometimes questions, uh, you know, just make your question a question and keep concise and get through as many people as you can. Uh, first question, somewhere in the dark.